Hi, I am Arjun, working as assistant professor in uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sai Vidya Institute of Technology. So, uh, in today's session, uh, I am going to discuss uh, uh, the Petroff's equation, or uh, even we can call it as frictional losses or power losses in a lightly loaded journal bearing. So, uh, yeah, to start with, okay, to start with, so let us consider a lightly loaded journal bearing. So, uh, we can consider a full journal bearing okay, with a journal. So, this is a journal, journal rotating concentrically with respect to bearing and this journal uh, runs concentrically with the bearing under certain assumptions. Okay? Uh, the assumptions that we make while deriving Petroff's equation is, okay, the first assumption is we assume that the radial load acting on the journal the radial load acting on the journal as zero. The radial load acting on journal is zero. And this is the first assumption. The radial load acting on the journal is zero. And the second assumption is the viscosity of the fluid is equal to infinity. The viscosity of the fluid is equal to infinity. And the third assumptions, assumption that we make is the speed of the journal is assumed to be infinity. The speed of the journal is equal to infinity. So these are the uh, three assumptions that we make in uh, deriving Petroff's equation. Okay? But uh, see, practically speaking, it is impossible to satisfy this these conditions. However, if the load is very light, okay. However, if the load is very light, uh, uh, say the load is light enough, and uh, if the journal has sufficiently high speed, the viscosity will be very high. Uh, then, say eccentric eccentricity of the journal and the bearing, okay, between the uh, regions mm -hmm. is very small, so that the oil film around this region can be considered to have uniform thickness, okay. So, uh, say if, if we want to write this region separately, so I will uh, rewrite like this. So, this is a let us consider this as surface A, so which is journal surface which is in motion, and uh, this bearing surface uh, we all know this bearing will be under uh, rest condition. So, let us call this as surface B which is stationary. which is a bearing surface okay which is a bearing surface okay and uh, this figure shows okay this particular figure shows okay the journal bearing in an unwrapped condition uh, with say the surface a moving with a constant velocity u okay moving with a constant velocity u uh, with respect to the bearing and this surface b is uh, stationary okay which actually represents bearing represent bearing and this particular okay, uh, dimension can be taken as 2 pi into r with respect to a particular bearing and okay, the frictional force developed okay, the frictional force developed for a bearing okay, developed can be given by frictional force f is equals to tau into area a so you can call this as equation 1 this frictional force f is nothing but tau into a so this is called as equation 1 where tau is a shear st shear stress on the journal surface and a is a area of the journal surface and f is a frictional force okay so and uh, we all know that okay we all know that okay this uh, 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 no uh, from newton's law of viscous force okay from Newton's law of viscous force. Law of viscous force. We can write that. Okay, from Newton's law of viscous force, we can write that shear stress is directly proportional to the rate of shear r. Okay, and uh, see when when you consider uh, a lubricant. Okay, so every lubricant will have its own viscosity. So the shear stress will be proportional to this rate of shear with respect to the viscosity, so we consider uh, absolute viscosity. And if we substitute this into say equation one, so now 
the frictional force equation will become like this f is equal to okay f is equal to uh, this eta mm -hmm. into r into a where this r rate of shear okay so uh, we have many layers of fluid which will be flowing so each layer will have its own velocity and each layer will have its own thickness so this r can be written as u by h okay so this frictional force f can be written as u divided by h into a and area of this projected surface okay area of this projected surface a is 2 pi r into length length of the bearing and u is mm -hmm. u is 2 pi r n into 60 2 pi r n sorry 2 pi r n divided by 60 and we know that this clearance h can be assumed equal to c now this frictional force will become f is equal to eta into 2 pi r n divided by 60 into h and this a will be 2 pi r into l so now this equation frictional force will become 2 into 2 4 pi square r square n l into eta divided by 60 into h now this is a frictional force developed okay frictional force developed Okay, we can replace this h by c, h is equals to c, uh, which is the radial clearance and l is length of the bearing. And if we want to find out, okay, torque developed for this, okay, if you want to find out the torque developed for this case, okay, this torque developed T will be F, which is a frictional force into R, which is a radius. So, this uh, torque developed T will be 4 pi square r square n l eta mm -hmm. divided by so 60 into c so I can I will rewrite h as c or you can if you want for your convenience you can represent h as h itself okay into r so the start developed will be 4 pi square r cube n l eta divided by 60 into see this is torque developed for the bearing okay it, this is called uh, torque developed for the bearing and if you want to find out power loss in the bearing so if you want to find out the power loss in the bearing okay power loss p will be frictional force okay frictional force into the velocity of the bearing u Okay, and we know that this frictional force is 4 pi square r square 4 pi square r square n l eta divided by 60 into c into u is 2 pi r n divided by 60. So now this power loss will be 8 4 into 2 is 8 pi cube r cube so r square into r is r cube n into n square n into n is n square l eta divided by 3600 into c now this is power loss in the bearing so now uh, the now in order to find out uh, the coefficient of friction okay uh, for a lightly loaded bearing okay the coefficient of friction okay the coefficient of friction for a lightly loaded bearing okay uh, so coefficient of friction so coefficient of friction mu okay mu r you can consider it as f mu is frictional force divided by the load acting frictional force divided by the load acting we know that this load is equals to p into d into l okay p into d into l where uh, uh, this p is a projected area of the journal bearing so if you want to find out p p will be equals to w divided by d into l so we can use this this is projected area of the bearing 
so we all know what is frictional force so frictional force is 4 pi square r square n okay 4 pi square r square n l into eta divided by 60 into c and w is so 1 divided by p into d into l okay so now this is uh, the frictional force and we know that okay uh, we know that so r is r is always d by 2 so since we have r square here so this r square can be written as r into d by 2 again d by 2 is r so r into r will become r square so uh, we can we can consider uh, that parameter and uh, since we have l here and l here we can cancel this so f mu will become 4 pi square so one r i will write as it is another r i will represent it as that as d by 2 so d divided by 2 into 60 into c so we have n okay divided uh, into eta so into p into d so now we can cancel 1 d and 1 d so so finally uh, finally we will be left out with so we can we can take this 2 1 sir, 2 2 sir. okay so n by 60 can be taken as n dash so finally f mu will be so 2 pi square r okay 2 pi square r n dash into eta divided by 60 into c into p okay so now this is uh, uh, the frictional force and since we know that clearance ratio okay clearance ratio clearance ratio psi is nothing but radial clearance divided by radius r even you can write that as diametral clearance divided by diameter so this psi will become c divided by r this is small c divided by r r now uh, even you can represent this this as diameter 2 times radial clearance is uh, diameter clearance divided by diameter ok diameter is 2 times radius so again both are same so since we have r by c so you can represent r by c as 1 by psi so we will substitute that into this equation now on substitution of this into this equation so and uh, sorry uh, we have n dash here so it will become uh, n dash uh, 60 will not come into picture so f mu will become f mu will become 2 pi square eta n dash divided by p into so this r by c will be 1 by psi ok now this is this particular equation is the Petroff's equation for coefficient of friction Petroff's equation for coefficient of friction thank you